Hi everybody and happy holidays from Acorn Wealth. This is John Seville for your executive summary for the end of the week heading into the Christmas holidays. So uh, let's have a look. We did get that Christmas rally that everyone was looking for. Uh, we obviously bounced off this 1980 support zone and we've had straight into the uh, 2080 level that we talked about in the previous executive summary. So uh, we're now at resistance. We could see a bit of a pullback to support, uh, given the, uh, the the level of um, uh, aggression we've seen in the rally. So there still are a lot of uh, there is a lot of momentum behind this, um, and therefore a good opportunity to look at some pullbacks on some of these momentum plays. So I've um, uh, just to do a bit of a review of some of the plays in focus. Uh, let's have a quick look at COVS. We'll run through some of the ones. Just a quick look back on some of the previous plays from executive summaries. COVS hit its target today, rallying 5.88%, up from $2.20 to now a landing target of $2.88. So that was great. Um, AGCO also has uh, had a great day, uh, also going higher at uh, closed at 45.29, up from 42.50 when we found it. So that was also a nice little gift. GASL, which you uh, may recall was from our executive summary uh, on Wednesday, and uh, you can see we talked about. I put a tar I bought this at 4.45, uh, had a target at 4.93, so that easily took that out today. And this could be, in fact, a play that we look at, or that I might look at taking another position in on Monday, given the level of uh, the cold front potentially coming in to the states. Uh, this is up 11% up today. Could have a lot more to go. As you can see, this is the triple bull. So uh, a, a rally um, in the in the natural gas could bring this. Uh, as high as uh, here at 11.56, so another possible 100% return. So for some speculative cash, that's going to be something I'm looking at again uh, at support on Monday, depending on the open. Uh, okay, so another one that I'm holding is NTLS. Uh, we talked about this in trading room last night. If you, uh, for those of you who follow along with our trading room uh, membership, and uh, this has been uh, really interesting action today because look at the money flow just shoot straight up. And um, the reason why was we've got a very bullish close coming out of this fallen angel type of formation. And uh, yesterday I only traded 566,000 uh, shares, it was up 7%, but today 4.14 million shares. Now, I can't find any news on the stock, so this says to me that perhaps something's going on. So that's really interesting to see, and this could be the start of something beautiful. <laughs> I do own a position in this. Um, now let's have a look here uh, at LTS. I've been trying to get a position in this, um, but uh, obviously it uh, didn't get down to that 390 price target I was looking for. But what's happening right now is what we call a bump and run formation, where we basically scoop at the bottom, and you can see this kind of a, almost like a handle of a spoon, and then it rounds out the bottom, comes up, hits a resistance, bumps, and then runs. So these could be uh, good pullback plays. So watching this uh, Monday, possibly to a pullback again to that 390 level, or even around this uh, four dollar price, I'll be watching that Monday morning. This could be a nice little um, spike up for another 10 percent at least towards this uh, level here at four dollars 44.50. So again, my kind of prize targets I'm looking for are these eight to 10 percent plays. Um, and uh, LTS has been something that obviously I've been watching for. Uh, so watching to make sure that uh, this doesn't drop too far is what the main concern is. We had a 1.02 million sell-off today uh, versus the 474,000 up yesterday. So surprising to see so much profit taking. So again, we'll look for that support level around 390 to hopefully hold, which also is where the $3.89 nine day moving average is. Okay, now, on the um, so that's uh, basically bringing up to speed on some of our recent selections. Now, in terms of some of the new ones, I'm, uh, I'm looking at some of these kind of very speculative uh, companies at the moment. Now, for those of you who've been with us for a while, you may remember that EI was one of our uh, one of our picks back here in early October and did extremely well. It rallied up from uh, four bucks to a high of thirteen. Now, the the um, this happened as a result of um, there's a lot of institutional buying that was happening around here from a company called Burnstar, or a fund called Burnstar. Now this is a really interesting story on Burnstar. It's a bloke who um, basically started his own hedge fund. Uh, he hasn't disclosed how much assets are under management, but um, basically what his specialty is, and he's backed by Goldman Sachs, uh, his specialty in Burnstar is um, 
or Barn Star, I should say, is looking for distressed companies that are in legal problems that are basically being slammed. But uh, based, and then it gets a group of selective lawyers that are very specialist in these different fields and researches them. And if he finds that, and, and the basic strategy, as far as I understand it, is to develop core positions in these companies and then look for companies that, even worst case scenario, are still undervalued. And you can see that right before this big rally, Barnstar took a position in this on the 14th of October. Now, so I thought this was a really interesting acquisition because quite um, right, right afterwards we had this. Uh, almost 100%, um, well, much more than 100% rally. We've consolidated, and now we're starting to go for another little uh, jaunt. 1.13 million shares trading today, and uh, we got, we've pulled off of support at 8.85. So again, this is going to be something I'm looking at for a pullback into that support zone around uh, 9 Excuse me, around uh, nine dollars thirty, nine dollars forty. So I'm going to. That's going to be one I'm looking at for a, uh, a pullback to support play. Again, it could just keep shooting up, but I want to make sure my risk reward is right. So ESI, one of the ones I'm looking for on my long watch list for Monday. Um, let's go to MCHX. Now MCHX, also another interesting play. You can see this this long period of uh, very lifeless, boring consolidation really. Um, but now we've started to get some life back in it. So um, I'm looking at this around the 426 level, 4, 430 level. Uh, it's currently at 458. So again, I want to have that healthy pullback and uh, tag that intraday low. You'll see that almost on every candle. Uh, if we zoom in just a little bit, you can see almost every single candle has come and touched the night, a five-day exponential moving average. So assuming that's going to be higher Monday, uh, we, it's currently at 426. So it's probably going to be coming in at around $4.30 or so opening of trading Monday. And that's what I'm going to be looking at as a potential entry point. And uh, in terms of targets, there's not much holding it back. You can see the next moving average that it comes into contact with doesn't seem to be here until the uh, until the. Um, 100-day moving average there, and that's currently at 567. So, there's your uh, MCHX. Um, another very uh, interesting low-ticket item is uh, ATEN. Now, um, I was actually interested because uh, NTLS uh, was um, uh, one of my little favorites that I found through my Fallen Angel scan, and I noticed that there was a commentator on the street. Uh, dot com that was actually picking it as a uh, as a favorite of his as potential um, uh, breakout play also and what I found was interesting is that I came across a10 also through my fallen angel scan and uh, the same commentator was actually talking about this also as a breakout play so we're obviously thinking alike um, and um, you can see this has had just a dramatic drop the insiders were selling all up at these prices and um, so because they were selling at eleven dollars and nine dollars, uh, that doesn't really factor in as a deterrent because, hey, uh, buying it back at four sounds like a pretty good deal if you got out at 11. Now, this is just starting to turn. So going, to, um, uh, going into this chart, it's got this very kind of just beginning type look to it. The volume yesterday was 557,000. The volume today, 993,000. So uh, again, a possible um, one of these speculative recovery stocks, if you like these types of stories, have a look at this one. It's got its fi uh, five day exponential at 417. So I'd be looking around that 420 level. Again, something that I'd be looking to, I'm looking to play with some speculative capital. Uh, not a huge position, uh, just something small that can, uh, can really benefit, obviously, if it starts to complete this gap up to 650, that's a nice 50% move. So, I mean, if I'm taking a 10% risk on something like that that offers 50% potential, I'm still getting that uh, 5 to 1 risk reward ratio. What I want to do, though, is scale back the amount of capital I'm using to ensure I'm not risking too much of the overall portfolio uh, as a proportion of that dollar figure that the 10% represents. Okay, and finally, to go to a bit of a bigger board stock, uh, FireEye. FireEye has uh, broken out of its consolidation. I've got a bid in at the moment for 31.50. I didn't want to chase it because it was already up here at 33.34 when uh, one of my other coaches contacted me and said, hey, uh, this is something I'm, uh, we should be interested in. So um, the story is, as I understand it, is the FBI and FireEye are behind looking, the, uh, looking into the Sony attack. So, um, or the Sony hack. 
Now, um, uh, that's obviously going to do very well for FireEye. They are, as I understand it, one of the leading internet security people. So um, uh, a lot of the other companies that are st moving strongly have just kept going up and up and up. And this stock has been under a lot of pressure. And as you can see, uh, came down from these $90 highs. So uh, if we have a look at the money flow, we'll also see that that's just starting to breach up. And we have a, um, a bit of a potential recovery story. I still want to see a pullback because no matter how good the trade, I want to get the right price. But this is the uh, final stock here from the long side. Now, just to offset that with something on the short side to uh, weight it out a little bit, uh, AFFX, on the other hand, does look good. Uh, we're kind of double topping here. We had some heavy volume coming in on the sell today, and it's just peaked out, gone into this kind of sharp resistance zone. And this could be a nice pullback from the area here at 965 down to just here at about nine bucks is what I'm going to be looking for. And that's a nice way to kind of hedge uh, some of these other long potentials that I'm looking to take and are, or are already in. So that's hopefully a nice breakdown for uh, the week. And we hope you have a wonderful weekend and a very happy holidays from all of us at Acorn. Take care.